Mike Bond here at Ultimate Fitness, Huntington Beach, with Juan Archuleta, who's fighting Enrique Barzola, yeah. October 1st, just down the street, man. I mean, how exciting is this to have a Bellator event just as close to your backyard as it gets? Yeah, I mean, it's super honoring, you know, like you get to go and like you get to sleep at your home, you get to cut weight at your own gym, you get yeah. to train with your own training partner still, you don't have to fly a bunch of people out, you don't have to worry about your food, your diet, and what you're going to look for, like supermarket wise on uh, when you travel, you know, so especially with our weight cut, like it takes a lot to do, so, you you know, to be here in Long Beach is going to be awesome. Yeah, do you, will you spend fight week at home, like sleep in your own bed the night before the fight and stuff? Oh, yeah. Uh, pretty much take it like um, repetition, right? I'm a guy that's like a creature of habit. So anything that's a schedule, anytime I have to break my schedule, it's kind of like uh, a culture shock for me. But uh, now being here, being able to have that schedule is going to be awesome. Yeah. And what did you just make of the matchup? Obviously, uh, you know, they're kind of maybe doing like a constellation bracket for the Grand Prix and stuff a little bit here. What do you think of this fight against Enrique? Yeah, I mean, this is who I thought I would be seeing in the finals, you know, granted, if I would have won and he would have won. I mean, both of us are coming off of uh, strong performances. We just unluckily got, he got caught in a guillotine being lazy on the fence. I got caught, um, you know, with a slow mistake that, you know, I mean, I still can't, I blocked that kick a million times, right? So going into the, into this fight, you know, this is pretty much a, a, a main event in itself, right? Me and Enrique both bring a high, high pace fight. We both go out there and we throw down. So I'm super excited for this matchup. Yeah. When you look back at the last one, I mean, like you said, that's just crazy stuff happens in the fights, right? You can do things right a million times and then it happens in the fight and it goes wrong. So is that how you digest it? Like kind of a zigged when you should have zagged type of thing? Yeah. I mean, I think it was more of him being so slow you know that caught me because like I was ready to block the kick and then I was waiting to meet the kick and I had to lower myself all the way down and caught the knee instead of the shin I think if I would have caught the shin I would have been fine but you know credit to him he threw the kick you know it was meant for the body and I was ready to absorb it but just him being so slow and worn down ready to quit in the fight it just you know happened that way it's a crazy sport, man. Yeah. Um, when you look at the remaining brackets of the tournament and stuff, like who are you kind of circling as you think is going to come out of this thing? Oh, 100% patchy mix. I mean, he's going to dominate uh, Magomedov. It showed in his last fight that he can't defend wrestling. Barzola took it to him. I mean, he was shooting uh, shots from two feet out. You know, it's like... Well, you get taken down two feet out in a double leg. Uh, Patchy's grappling is a lot stronger than Barzola, I feel like. And then uh, with Danny Sabatello and uh, and and um, Stotts, I, I think actually Sabatello pulls out this upset. You know, he's very. I wrestled with him in college. He's very good on his feet for takedowns and a very good rider. So if if uh, if Stotts can't get away, he's in for a long night. So I think we assume, you know, whoever comes out of this, they're going to fight Sergio, assuming he's healthy and everything, unify that title. Um, where do you kind of think you fit in kind of the queue after this? You get a win here. Um, what are you looking at as like the future for 2023? Yeah, 2023 for me, I mean, I'm looking to do like more legacy fights, right? Like something that's going to cement my legacy and history, you know, of the sport. Um, right now I'm on a trajectory of going up with my talent. You know, I've proved it in my last fight. Unfortunately, I'm on a two, you know, my, my record lately doesn't speak of it. I'm 0-2 in my last two fights, you know. So uh, going into there, thinking about that, it's just like, okay, where do I rebuild? And it starts with Barzola. Then from there, it's just like, you know, Horiguchi's been ducking me, so I don't think I'm going to get that fight right anymore. So it's like, okay who's out there next that I could go and challenge if the title's going to be, um, um, you know, fighting throughout the Bantamweight title and Sergio's out for a little bit. So just trying to find any fight that's 45, 55, something that's going to cement a legacy for me. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, how do you at this point decide the weight class? Like, was there any thought after the past two of maybe mixing it up and wanting to do something different? Like, what do you, what's kind of the decision process with you and your team and your coaches? Um, for us, it's usually like the matchmaking is, is what comes into play. Like, I don't care when I fight. Like, unfortunately, with the pandemic and everything and Bellator slowing down, uh, I fought in the last three years three times, you know, where I was used to fighting seven times in one year, you know. So it was just like, damn, how are we going to manage? So, uh, you know, just – it's just through matchmaking, they, they tell me, hey, we have this guy want, you want to fight, and it's like, I don't care, let's, what's the date, let's do it, let's sign it, you know? Yeah. How would you describe, like, your, I don't want to say relationship, but, like, happiness with Bellator right now? I see you out there tweeting, like, I want to be fighting as much as some of these guys and stuff. Like, uh, as you kind of described there, some stuff out of their hands, of course. But um, are you, like, satisfied with where you're at right now? Do you wish some things were different? How would you kind of describe it? Yeah, of course, like, uh, in my prime right now, I wish I could fight more, but I am very happy with Bellator. I mean, they give me, I mean, I've had four title fights with them, you know, how many people could say they have four title fights in one organization alone, you know, so I'm very blessed. 
Dallas and happy for the opportunities they have given me. They've shown that they've had my back and they continue to show they have my back. And so, I mean, I love them. I love going in there and fighting for them. Just, you know, of course, as an athlete, you always want to be more busy, right? Scott Coker, watch this, make it happen. Uh, how do you get this fight done against Enrique? You know what? I've, I'm going I'm to take it to him. Uh, we're going to be a high-pressured fight, and it's whoever's going to make that slow mistake that we both made in our last fights, you know, who can exploit it first, you know. So I feel like I'm going to get the second round finish, you know, ground and pound him out, and then finish out, the, finish out this year, hopefully, you know, be ready for the end of the year, um, you know, New Year's card, whatever it may be, to get in there and get back in there. So... Fans, tune in. Long Beach, we're coming. California, let's sell this place out. Let's get after it.